afraid of the dark. Hello, my listener. Today's story is about how in the mysterious city of Blumenau, where secrets lurk around every corner, the enigmatic confectioner Matusa guards not only sweet secrets but also a connection to mysterious forces. Enjoy listening. No one remembered exactly when the Gottlieba confectionery appeared in town. In the 1930s, those who fled Europe from the Nazis moved here, and a little later yesterday's pursuers followed their example. It just so happened that Brazil became an ideal choice for many who wanted to forget their past. In the town of Blumenau on the banks of the Atajaiasu River, there even formed its own compact community where the German language was spoken almost as often as the main language. Of course, the discovery of an authentic confectionery did not surprise anyone. The owner was a friendly old man. He always greeted visitors to his shop with a smile and wishes for a good day. His face seemed respectable, not clouded by heavy thoughts that often plague a person in old age. He spoke with an unchanged gruff accent. The unusual name Methuselah was immediately changed to the local style Methusa. The confectioner did not object. It seemed that Gottlieb was immortal. Years passed, but behind the pastry shop window stood the neat grandfather Methusa without fail. Adults understood that the business was passing by seniority. Each subsequent heir, they believed, came as a brother or son to the former owner. No one bothered with unnecessary questions. Oddities were simply not noticed, which could not be said about the little buyers. For them, the confectioner appeared as a real wizard. Children always perceive reality somewhat differently. Manalo, how many times have I told you? Stop it, please. But mom, I'm not asking for anything. Just to look. The boy looked imploringly at his angry and tired mother and kept whining until the woman relented. Okay, I won't give you money. Come back in five minutes. Of course, the little rascal smiled and rushed to the coveted door with all his might. The confectionery was open. The seller in a white apron over a retro suit with a bow tie leisurely poured multicolored caramels into chubby jars made of transparent glass. Oh, Manolo, my old friend, come in, come in. I'm glad to see you. Did you come to see again? Yes, mister. Methusa, I can't pay today. Well, that's no problem. You can always buy on credit. You know our rule, right? Yes. And yet. If you buy on credit, you must return the purchase price from the money you will receive soon. And you will definitely get them. The main thing is not to forget that debt comes first. And if I don't return it? The old man smiled and looked closely at the only visitor. Oh, then it will not be sweet. From the creaky laughter of the child, a bad feeling arose as if invisible cold hands grabbed him by the ankles and pulled him into the underworld, money will be. But do you have a conscience, my young friend? That conscience? Yes, it's a feeling. Only it is capable of coping with greed. Do you understand? It seems I do. So, did you want vanilla taffy and mint candies? Do you know the price? Yes, sir. Deal. And can I really pay it back? I won't demand payment from you until you get the money. That's the condition, Manolo. Okay. Having obtained what he desired, the child hurried onto the street. The candies were delicious. The caramel slowly melted, leaving refreshing notes of peppermint in the mouth. The boy peered into the paper bag with sweets inside. Anxiety receded. It was replaced by euphoria. What could be better than making a deal with the confectioner Methusa? His mother had not yet emerged from the haberdashery shop opposite. Rare passersby walked by without paying much attention to the boy. 
and he, in turn, with the typical excitement of a child's mind, scrutinized everyone and everything. Men, women, cars, birds in the sky, courtyard cats and stray dogs, any movement caught his attention. From the pocket of a tall stranger fell a crumpled piece of paper. Hey, sir. Sir. You dropped something. But he didn't even turn around. Each him, look at that. A jaguar adorned the brown scrap of paper. It was a worn 50 real banknote. A decent find for a child. Manolo immediately imagined what he could buy with that money. The day was shaping up to be the most favorable. If not for one circumstance, the little one had forgotten about the promise he made to the candy seller. An hour later, an expensive car stopped in front of the confectionery. The chauffeur in a uniform cap opened the door and helped a businesslike man in his forties get out. The man resembled a large striped beetle. His fashionable suit did not suit his corpulent barrel-shaped figure. The fat man stood in the middle of the sidewalk and looked around. Tiny droplets of sweat covered his swollen face. His narrow tongue, like a lizard's, licked thin lips. His eyes casually assessed the surroundings. Is this it? The passenger squeezed out, addressing the driver. Yes, Senor Cabral. Damn shop. If the old man doesn't agree, I'll tear it down and the mayor will thank me. Of course, sir, it's very foolish to resist development. Wait here, I'll talk to this scoundrel myself. The dealer rudely opened the door and stepped inside. Scandalous by nature, he began to generously sprinkle threats and insults right from the threshold. Dot, 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 listen to my advice, you rascal. I give you 12 hours to gather all this rubbish and disappear from my city. Yours? Methusa continued to arrange the jars of sweets on the shelves and didn't even think to turn around. Exactly. Here's the order. The fat man pulled out a crumpled, quadrupled sheet of official paper from his pocket. This land belongs to me. I'm a tenant for a hundred years. Does the senior plan to live such a long life? Are you mocking me, idiot? The law is on my side now. Tomorrow I'll summon bulldozers here and demolish your shack. I see. Let tomorrow come. Cabral turned purple and squealed like a shot pig. The dispute with the confectioner had dragged on too long and threatened to ruin all plans to demolish the old trading quarter. Neither threats nor promises nor tricks could sway Gottlieb in the desired direction. In the end, it proved easier to bribe the municipality. However, even now, the defeated old man showed neither proper respect nor fear. The confectioner turned slowly. There was no specific emotion to read on his seemingly ordinary face. Only his eyes changed color from blue to deep black. Methusa stared intently at the silent visitor and sang out with a smirk. Run, wild boar, away from the teeth and claws. His voice echoed in the bewildered developer's head. The fat man paled and hurried to retreat. He experienced an unexpected terror, feeling as though a large and dangerous animal lurked somewhere behind the counter of the stubborn shopkeeper. His scalp chilled and his legs grew weak. Fear felt like a physical force, inexorably urging him to flee. Instead of returning to his car and leaving, the businessman stumbled onto the street and ran away, not caring about the direction. Time shrunk to moments that flashed in and out of consciousness. Cabral stopped when the sun was already setting and the tropical twilight was quickly turning into impenetrable night. The area around him was unfamiliar. The broken dirt road disappeared into the depths of thickening jungles. Behind him came a guttural, abrupt roar. The predator appeared out of nowhere, as if the space and the turmoil-ridden imagination had conjured up a fierce forest hunter a jaguar. The man trembled and whimpered. He helplessly fell to his knees. 
Without hesitation, the beast circled its prey. Its black, unblemished fur seemed woven from the surrounding darkness. The jaguar hesitated, driven by a goal higher than instinct and the thirst for killing. There was something naive, uncharacteristic of a typical animal in this gesture. Of course, cats like to play with their prey, but this game hardly resembled ordinary amusement. Cabral closed his eyes, trying to dispel the illusion. When a sharp pain pierced his heart, the heart attack came faster than the claws and teeth. The lifeless body in the ridiculous striped suit remained on the half-forgotten road in the outskirts of Blumenau, while the jaguar returned to where it came from. Meanwhile, Methusa closed the shop and stepped out onto the alley lit by a pair of lanterns, surviving only by chance. The rest had long been smashed by local hooligans. However, the darkness could hardly frighten the shopkeeper. Flexible shadows moved towards the man in leaps and bounds. They seemed like grotesque projections on the dirty walls of the houses, the things one could imagine at night. The old man smiled and whistled, coaxing his unusual pets closer. The black jaguars cautiously surrounded their owner. The giant cats nuzzled him and intermittently growled, while he rubbed their ears and praised them for their good work. Ah, here's our newcomer. Manolo, my boy, what did I tell you about greed? It devoured your human essence, but don't worry. Polido will join us now. He'll tell you what you'll be doing from now on.